Hello, this is the Nightline Podcast. My name's James Pikeaway, and if you want to learn more about the program, please go to www.dubaii1038.com or email us, nightline at dubaii1038.ae. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Motoring Middle East is in the house, which means we are talking cars. Shazad is here. Imtishan is here. <laughs> Esther is manning the phone lines. It's a full house. It's a party. There we go. <laughs> we have cake and everything. I, you know what? I saw that. Yes. Gluten-free. It's, it's just sitting there calling to us, but we're being very, very good so far. <laughs> you, you know, the irony is, who whoever sent that, probably yes. some competitor radio station. Ah. Be, because think about it. Yeah. Can you eat cake and talk. So this is sabotage. Exactly. Sabotage. Exactly. Oh. exactly. They send the best that they can find from the lime tree. They place it in front of you, and they say, come on, we dare you. Eat it. You're the best cake for the job. <laughs> <laughs> One last oh, mission. Man. <laughs> you know, it's been a good summer. How? I know you guys, I've been following you on Facebook. You've seen a lot of cool vehicles and been involved. Yeah, we with one or two things. I... I had an opportunity. I, I'm just, I, I did the summer rentals, of course. Yes. Three different vehicles I got to drive. Uh huh. A Kia Optima. Kia Optima. What a beast. This <laughs> machine has enormous trunk space. Whoa. Or boot space. I'm so glad you said that. Four backpacks. Yes. Plus two carry-on bags. A Kia Optima. We're talking uh, Kia Optima. Yeah, yeah. Four We're door. talking the four-door saloon. Yes. Okay. And driving this thing in the United States... I, I thought to myself, am I going to like this Kia? There, there was something I didn't like, and it had 2.0 version electronics on board. So All right. it, it was terrible. Yeah. In that sense, it was old looking. It was stale looking. Well, it let, wasn't let, pleasant. Let me ask you, because we, we've, you know, over the last few months, we've been steadily getting a little bit, um, let's say, uh, a more analytical on <laughs> on the Korean products. Yes. You know, and the point that we were making was that we've been giving them a bit of a, a free pass because yeah. they were the underdogs, yes. right? So we were like, yes. okay, you know, oh, good, uh, let's go, you know, Hyundai, Kia. Good luck to yes. you guys, but. You know, they're not underdogs anymore. No. No. I, they, I was they, disappointed. You know, no. So this is the thing. So they, they've got the looks now. Oh, yeah. They've got the looks. They've got yeah. the gadgets. But do you still, do you feel that they are a modern car, contemporary, so, engineered, properly done car? The engine and the ride, spectacular. Really? Yes. Interesting. The, yeah. the ride yeah. was brilliant. I mean, this uh-huh. thing had, it had lots of pickup. It was fast. And it, 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 it had that nice, plush suspension that I love. Did you do mostly motorway miles or city and motorway? Yeah. It was and it, and it did well everywhere. It did well everywhere. Oh, cool. Great gas mileage. I couldn't Fair believe enough. the gas mileage. Yeah, that I would expect. Yeah. But I was let down by just the electronics on board. It was really? it was it was sad. Uh-huh. It was really sad. Uh-huh. So that I had the I had a couple of those Optimas, so that was kind of interesting. I also was driving around in the Ford Fusion. The Ford Fusion. Now that I like. And I got to say I drove two different models. Oh yeah. Loved them both. Why did you, did, what, what happened to one? Why did you have to get well, another one? Well, because I changed. You know, we, we, <laughs> the whole, hold on a second. We got, we got Imtishan over here. Yeah, he's, he's, he's back. Live. He's live. Hold on. He he's is. still not. Now he's live. He <laughs> <laughs> I keep futzing with this mic, but actually it's your fault. Yeah, I, I have a different mic on. That's, that's the way it goes. Uh, the, the Ford Fusion. Hello. just the way it goes. <laughs> had a black version, had a red version. Okay. Fully kitted out, sunroof. The whole bit. Yeah. Optima has a larger boot or trunk, depending on which country you're from. Well, Optima? Than, a, than a Fusion. Yes. I would know because I was putting four backpacks and carry-on bags and stuff in the Fusion and in the Optima. But the ride of that Optima, uh, sorry, of the, the Fusion, spectacular. One thing, though, that really kept throwing this small noggin of mine against the wall. Small oh, noggin. Was. <laughs> we can vouch for that, the, ladies and gentlemen. The, <laughs> The gear, the gear selector. What do we call that? The gear shift. The, the gear stick. There is no gear stick. It's, it's one of those round. Oh, it's a knobby thing. thing. It's a knobby thing. It's a knobby thing. And that right. took on, that on. took a little while to get used to. Why? The rotary knob. Why? The rotary because, knob. Yeah, you know what? It, but it, you you can get used you, to I it. I did. Though. No, no, I did get yeah. used to it. But yeah. it, it's just going from reverse to drive yeah. to park. Yeah. I I was forever going from reverse into park. But don't you think those are still better than some of the yes. newer electric levers yes. that don't actually move along yes. a plane? Absolutely. You literally just have to, you know, move them back and forth one yeah. time and that's it and they sort of spring loaded. Yeah. Those those are the ones I can't get on with. Yeah. Hats off to the f- the folks at Ford uh, Different vehicles had different electronic systems in them. The last one we drove was obviously a newer uh, Ford Fusion and my son gets in instantly syncs up with his phone. 
his iPhone instantly. So what's the first thing you did? Did you get into the car and sync up his phone, or did you look for USBs? Uh, both. So first thing you did yes, was look a for lot U- of hands. <laughs> first thing you did was look for a USB, and then the the the, com- the the car automatically synced. It was, you know, it's it's available. <laughs> so there you go. So that's that's the thing with the cars these days. You get into a car, you're not looking at its performance or no. its uh, its ride or its nope. comfort or its space. Nope. You're like, can I hook up my equipment? That's can it. I hook up my yeah. phone? <laughs> Can I Snapchat from this yeah. car? Which, by the way, I would like drive. to discourage. <laughs> I see so many people Snapchatting, oh, you know, f- dri- whilst driving. Please don't do that. This is Car Talk, by the way. If you want to get involved in the program, we do have an SMS line. We do have a phone number. I'll let you know what those both are in just a second. And if you're a frequent listener to the program, you already know what they are. Motoring Middle East is in the house. We're talking cars. If you're wondering what we're going on about, you know what I, I totally loved about the Ford as well? I mean, I, and again, these were rental cars, is how, how easy it was to use the cruise control. Whether well, it was, it be. whether yeah. it was, it wasn't that easy in the Optima. I had to figure it out. It would, it took really? me quite a while to figure it out. Is it the toggle thing? Yeah, it, it was just, it's weird, it was toggle. nicely placed. The yeah. the lighting, because again, at night I I wear reading glasses, and you know it starts yeah. getting dark. Some of the blue lighting gets hard to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. thought blue lighting is easier to see. I don't know. I orange, always, orange lighting is easier. The, the fusion see. just worked it out. I love that car. I would I would so own makes, one of those. This is a very nerdy question. Who makes the best cruise control stock? You know, it used to be a Jaguar at one yeah. point because they had this very it's simple... Called the press rota- Jaguar no, made something that was great. Yeah, yeah, because they had this very simple uh, gnarled rotary knob on the steering gnarled? wheel itself. Yeah. Gnarled like somebody's you know face or yeah. nerd like what you actually Nerl, mean? Nerl, the, the, la- the so best one that I've driven recently for cruise control, and I love cruise control, was that Bentley that I drove uh, several months ago. See, Bentleys, you know, Bentleys to me are old school. It, it, you know? That's what it is. You it was old school and cruise control. And you can exactly never, the you can way never, I like it. You can never sync up your phone to a Bentley. Yeah, I wasn't... I, we're talking cruise control. We're not talking sync. The cruise <laughs> control was, you know, push the little button, yeah. boom, up to set the speed, down to take it up and down. It was perfect. Yeah. I'm perfect. Sorry. Can anything beat the magnificence of the basic Toyota cruise control stock, which has been around for about 30 yeah, years? Yeah, you know, I don't think so. And they've used it in virtually everything from Supras to 86s yeah. to Land Cruisers to pretty much every Toyota product ever made. We're, we, we land in Regina, Saskatchewan, Go to get my Regina rental. Regina or Regina? Regina, as in the queen. <laughs> and uh, go and get the my car. It's a medium-sized car. Do you know what they give me? A go golf. On. A, a golf. four-door golf. I, I look at them and I'm going... They haven't seen your kids. I'm yeah. going, medium-sized car? Right. I, so I got four backpacks and two carry-on bags. So what's so in so this is this is in Canada. Yes. Yeah. So what's no, in, in the middle of Canada. So what's the medium size? What is medium in Canada though? Well, uh, clearly the Ford Fusion in Toronto. Right. Uh, in in Regina, Saskatchewan. It's a small hatchback. A go- <laughs> <laughs> oh, lost in translation. <laughs> you know, right. It was it was fun. I won't dri- even pronounce the second part of that name of the place that you're talking it, about. It was fun driving <laughs> the Golf, and it it had spectacular stereo. So which Golf did you get? I, I don't know. They didn't give you a Golf GTI, did they? No. no. Oh, oh, hold on. No, no, no. Um, what was it? Golf something. One point four. One. It was one point four. Is a pretty good engine. On that the was golf, larger actually. than that. All right. That's that was pretty, nice. It's a good car, though. The Golf. Oh, it was a great car. Yeah. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, really zippy. But zippy. it was zippy. Technical it wasn't the diesel, was it? There you go. No, no, I wish it was it was diesel, but no, it was it was a zippy EPA car. Doesn't, but yes. a zippy car, but I I still take the Ford over it. The anything. Fusion. Yeah. yeah the Fusion's good, you know, it's good. And it's got the Aston Martin front on it. You oh, know what I mean? That's so exactly, you know, that was it. So, so you reverse, you go into a mall or somewhere, you reverse park it, then you walk away <laughs> going... <laughs> what part of a Fusion looks like an Aston Martin? The front, the front part the front of part. it. The grill. Yeah. How much are you squinting? No, no, no. No, no. no I'm not does. doing any of, any, any of the Clint Eastwood. I'm just looking at the car. Yeah, and go it has and got look. an Aston Martin uh, grill on it. Yeah, absolutely. All of you. Fuck you. There's nothing in the Fusion. However, if you do squint, even a Ford Figo has an Aston Martin grill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're you're talking cars. Squinting, you're blind. <laughs> we're talking cars, and as you're making your way from here to there, and if you've got something you want to add to the conversation, you know how to do it. Uh, Amin has already come through, and he says, "Gents, quick question. No questions are quick. Yeah. Uh, 2013 LX 570, gray metallic color, 71,000 kilometers, pristine condition. Uh, he said, uh, bought from Lexus at 15,000. He's saying, uh, driven only in the city." Do you, do you think that uh, you know I, I should sell it for you know uh, something reasonable or just hold on to this thing? Hold on well, to it. Why are you selling it? Why well, would maybe you sell he it? needs to suck ash it in. But we don't really do valuations anymore, do yeah, we? Yeah, no, unfortunately. We no, don't. we don't. We don't do valuations. He, he bought no. it for fifteen thousand. I mean, it's gonna be no, tough. No, fifteen thousand. Yeah. 
15,000. At, at 15,000 yeah. kilometers. Yeah, 15,000. He bought it at 15,000. 71,000 yeah, kilometers. kilometers. Yes, yes. I think it's going to be tough because it's a fairly newish car. And and it's 71,000 kilometers now, so he yeah. would have spent full full force on that. Yeah, yeah that's not going to be cheap. Uh, mm. And also right now, the second-hand market isn't in the best place. It's summer. Nobody's here. You'll see a substantial improvement from September onwards. I think yeah. the used car buyer, when would we well, say Well, no, to be honest, you, you're, 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 Mr. Chan's absolutely right. Now's a good, not a good time to sell privately. However, however, if you're looking to trade it in on a newer version, there you go. dealers are looking to bite your hands off and your arms actually at the shoulder right now. So if, here, you, if you're thinking... Here, <laughs> yeah, I, I think <laughs> as far as the shoulder. Or uh, the neck level. Well, that would just get very vampirish, wouldn't yeah. it? So... <laughs> Uh, Our if audience. There you are. So I think yeah, if you're looking to trade it, and if you're looking to trade in for a newer LX570, then that would make perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, we're not saying that you get the best money for the car, but that would be the best option. Trying to sell it yourself right now would not be uh, yeah. uh, easy. We're gonna we're gonna take a, a quick breather. Let people get onto the phone lines. Get let them get on the SMS lines, and we're gonna come back and find out what you guys have been driving because I know that you are out there on the roads on some really cool pieces of kit. This is Car Talk, and I got the guys from Motoring Middle East in the house. Shazad is here, Imtishan is here, that means Motoring Middle East is in the house. We're talking cars. All sorts of uh, responses have come in to the Aston Martin Ford comparison. Really? Uh, mostly from Sajid, saying, yeah. I'm with Imtishan. Okay, well, that disqualifies him right there. Yeah. Uh, He's not put I, me in anything. Hold on. <laughs> I disagree on principle. <laughs> he what, says, what? I've heard uh, a, a lot of this recently. A lot of what? That Empty the fr- Exactly. <laughs> no, the, the, <laughs> the front of a Ford looks like an Aston Martin. And he's saying, I'm not having any of it. Uh, well, it, it, should, it could be that he's heard a lot of it because it's actually true. Yeah, and he says, <laughs> and I'm including the grill when I say that. So he obviously knows the part everyone thinks looks like the Aston Martin. And he's, uh, he's saying, no, no, not happening. Well, you know, I mean, you and him need to go to the same optician, really. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking him to Sean. <laughs> no, we're talking you, because you, uh, we're not going to get into Corvettes now, are we? We're not going to get oh, into Corvettes. Go there. No, we're not going to get into Corvettes, but yeah. I, you know, I, blind I, I, leading I, the blind. I really thought that I was going to grow to love the Corvette. I was down in the U.S., and I was looking at the Corvettes, and now... Thank goodness there were so many people driving old well, ones. You know what? There's a new one coming. I know. Be- Mid-engine. And, and you know why it's coming? Because the old <laughs> one looks awful. They've got so many complaints, they don't want to talk about it. Uh, here's a great oh, one. God. This person's writing it. I'm kind of confused. I need your help. Well, he's come to the right place. Uh, so, <laughs> What, to get more confused or get less confused? Is this, we're, do all, I, we're all confused here. We're seriously. all a little confused. This is Car Talk, by the yes, way. Yes, that's right. On yes. Dubai Eye. If you're wondering what you're listening to, if, if it has to do Professional radio coming at you live. And if it has to do with automobiles, we're jammering on about it. Or is that yammering <laughs> on about it? We're just, just we're knurling on about no. it. I don't know anymore. Knurling, yammering. <laughs> Knurling. Yeah. Kind of confused, wants to know, do I go with the new Prado full option or do I get the Lexus GX460 instead? Ooh. I'd, go with, I'd go with the Prado full option. What do you think, Mr. Resident? It, it, it's definitely going to cost you a little less. If you're going to go off-roading, get the Prado. If you're going to go street riding, get the Lexus. Uh, is street, it, what is street riding? That's not going uh, off-road. You've just do, made that up. Do you do I'm street riding in a Prado? Isn't that something, isn't that something like you do on a bike? Riding. Um, <laughs> basically, the, Lex, the Lexus can go off-road, but I don't really recommend it. No. It's, it's not ideal. No. But the it's also the V8 engine. It's a bit old-fashioned. doesn't really feel that quick. I think the Prado is all you need. But the Lexus looks just a little bit nicer. I would sort of... Yeah, you know, it does it's and it doesn't. Little, I mean, it's got the Lexus badge. He's talking about the GX, right? Well, it's heavier, though, isn't it? GX it's, a, it's, it's got the bigger engine the in it, so yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I, would, I would push people towards the RX, which is a much oh, yeah. nicer, more modern so go with the, Lexus. In this case, go with the Prado full, full option and be, be happy. In this particular case, I would say go Prado full option. Mm-hmm. There we go. There you go. We solved one. Yeah. That's one. Was that the quick question or the quick? I don't know if that was the quick answer or the on the confu- that was the confused answer, wasn't it? Yeah, All right. that was confused. no, that was the correct answer to a confused question. So this one is coming to the Car Talk program. We've right. got a, a message directed directly to the program. I right. love those. And the the question for purchase of a second car. Uh huh. So now they've even prefaced the question. These people obviously know me. <laughs> My ability to read SMS messages. And it goes on to say, hi, Talking guys. Very formal, what do it? you think of a GCC spec BMW 2003 E46 M3 Coupe with manual transmission that is sound mechanically but has done 230,000 kilometers? Uh, for the price, uh, they're, they're asking prices about 30,000 dirhams. 
What do you think about this for a daily driver? Well, first thing is, does it have a, his, a history, service history? Does yeah. it have a service history? Like an is emotional it, history? Is or it, what sort of well, <laughs> does no. it have a history? Well, it probably has an emotional history being an M3. Does it have a service history to prove that it's been looked after? Yeah, that's, that's if, a big it, one. And if it does have a service history to prove that the car has been looked after, then totally walk away from the car and SMS me the number of the seller. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call... <laughs> <laughs> Baloney. I don't believe there's a GCC spec manual car still running around that's with a full that, service that's history. That's kind of what I was getting I'm at. Cause that, sounds, that sounds too good to be true. That sounds fantastic. I mean, to be honest, if that car is in half decent condition for 30,000 dirhams, oh, point, oh, point us at it. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> to be fair, that car will need 30,000 more in terms of bits for it because it's an yeah. old M3. Let's not be. Let's be very clear here. This car is going to need a lot of bits. It's a gonna, lot of bits. There's 230,000 kilometers. Whoever owned this has been driving it and been loving that machine. Oh yeah, yeah. E46 M, E46, right? Yeah. E46, E46 M3, M3 yeah. possibly but the you know, best M3. That's what I was going to say. That is actually that is the one to get. You know, yeah. I mean, aside from the original E30, so if it's not the original, that's the one to get. If it doesn't have a complete service history, would you walk away from that vehicle? No, not necessarily, because that car, if, oh, that, yeah, is, if, if that is a GCC spec manual, it's it's so rare and so unique that it is worth looking at. If it doesn't have a service history, get it down to a specialist, get it down to an yeah. expert, That's about get the it time checked. that the M3 started coming to this market with SMG gearboxes, which are notorious for failing, oh. and they're fixable. Look, everything about that generation of M3 has been understood. The okay. failings, the strong points, the weak points. So even if it is a car without fully complete service history, most of the weak points can be rectified. The main thing is all the obvious stuff, crash damage, etc. Right. You know, the things that you should be looking for anyway. But if it's an M3, don't be too frightened, apart from the fact that it's not a cheap car to run. Even if it was in perfect condition, things fail on it. So, okay. don't let me dissuade you. It's a great car. I had one. They were great. All right. So, go check it out and, uh, you know, get a, get a, get the professionals to take a look at it and let you know. Not us. <laughs> well, no, you no. got to take it to a mechanic. Yeah. And, and someone that knows these types of vehicles so that you know how much you're going to be in for. Is this, a, is this the one that had, had Vanos in it as well, isn't it? Cause it they, had Vanos. It yeah, because that's another thing. Because when you take it to a mechanic, as well as the SMG gearbox, as Imtishan has rightly pointed out, also ask them to check the Vanos valves on the car. Those go pop and yeah, they're not cheap. And they However, are they very can expensive. They, they can, can be. yeah. And catch them early, no problem at all. You don't want them going, all, going wrong, you know, because then that's bad. All of these German cars that had had one catastrophic failure point, like Porsche had the IMS thing on their 911s and Boxsters, and BMW had the Vanos. What did Mercedes have? Just basically the, the dark years. Has, the basically dark years. everything in that is everything. <laughs> the dark years. With Mercedes. The <laughs> And if you find a Jaguar... They have the American <laughs> ML, actually, to be honest with you. The American oh, the ML. American the first-gen ML. American ML. Don't actually, touch it. Actually, ML, everything American, early German, yeah. 4x4. Because the first X5 wasn't they much They weren't very good either. But those no. MLs were kind of weird-looking. They, they were... They well, were it wasn't just they're weird-looking. They were just badly put together. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it was the first time the We can say that because we're here. And, and it's been 15, 16 there's years. There's no you know, Americans fine. listening, so it's fine. <laughs> but they didn't know how to build a Mercedes All back directions then. point to him. All directions point to him. So all fingers are, are aimed at Shazad. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Who's looking behind him? Yeah. <laughs> She's looking at the blue bits, which you're you can't see. If, if you're wondering what you're listening to, this is Car Talk, Motoring Middle East. Uh, Shazad and Imtishan are here in the studio. We're taking your questions. Oh, yeah. Whether it be SMS or phone line, we'll get those contact details to you in just a second. Uh, so anyway, so as we we're saying, there go, you go. go take a look at this thing. This is the BMW 2003 E46 M3. Why not? Go have a look. Sounds good to me. But just be warned. Yeah. Mohammed's come through and he says, Hi, guys. I heard that the new CX-9 is coming. What do you think? Is it going to be good? <coughs> Mohammed from Mazda. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear <coughs> the new CX-9 was coming? <laughs> what a surprise, Mohammed. <laughs> <laughs> Can't sneak that one past us, can you? Oh, man. Is you, is Should we talk about the CX-9 because he's basically from Mazda? Well, you well guys, he is. You, we're not. You guys we love can Mazda. Like. This is very annoying yeah. because it's a sneaky move, Mohammed and Alvin. Yeah, Mohammed. But on the other hand, you know your CX- name comes up on the SMS line, yeah, Mohammed. You cannot hide. <laughs> but however, the CX-9, very interesting car. Because it's the first time where they sort of downsized the engine. Because it used to be this 3.7 V6. That's what everyone and loved. And now it's a 2.3 four-cylinder turbo. I might be wrong. Might be a 2.5. Mohammed, already correct me yeah, on this. Yeah, he'll but correct you. It's it's a small, low-pressure turbo, and actually reduced the power to 200 something. The idea being that it's optimized the engine and the torque patterns for the kind of driving that most people do. Hmm. So most people don't rev most their engine. Most people that are still awake at this point, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Mazda engineer felt like when he explained it in the boardroom. They all just dropped off. But the idea is that, you know, you don't put having 300 horsepower in a car if nobody ever revs it out there and gets to 300. So they sort of reduce the power down to a level that most people can actually feel it. So it'll feel like a normal car, 
much more powerful than talkie. That's the, that's the push in your back. Okay. Technical term. It's the push in your the back. Push you in your up. back. Yeah. So basically, we can we can win the the stoplight Grand Prix. No, you can't because when you get up to the top, well, there's no CX-9. power. Nine. <laughs> Depends what you go up against. Hang on, the old Kia CX-9. Picanto. <laughs> might be all right then. Yeah, but <laughs> is in, this going to be a good thing for a CX-9 though? Do you think? Dropping down that size a little bit. I mean, I know you're saying we don't really use all of those horsepower, but that doesn't mean I don't want to have them there just in case. Well, it all depends on what it's like when we actually get here, what the yeah. car feels like on the road. Uh, my concern will be that works in places like L.A., yeah. in the U.K., when you're working around in the city, yep. slow speed, That's that my turbo worry. makes all the difference. But we do a lot of high-speed driving. And, and we know what worries me is when you have that little bit larger engine, you get that feel of the larger engine. You get that sound of a slightly larger engine. Indeed. By reducing it, is it going to be one of those whining engines? And if well, it's it, that, that's going to be annoying. Well, no, it, it, I don't think so because it depends on, what, you know what you're getting. You know, if you're buying yeah. a car and you're buying one with a V8, you know what you're getting. If you're buying one with a V6, you you know it's going to be a little bit less than that. But if you're going for efficiency, with the CX-9, I don't think those are the priorities for the typical CX-9 buyer. I think they're looking for comfort. They're looking for good equipment. They're looking for space. And they're looking for a, a good, comfortable, safe way to transport your family. In the words of the great Mohammed al falasi everyone wants a big engine. Mohammed al falasi jumps things, though. Yeah. You're not jumping in the CX-9. But you never know if you have to. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Fair enough. I would say I think it has the best interior in the class. Can we look at the pictures? Oh, yeah? It's a great looking car. Uh, has, have they downgraded the size a little bit as well? No, it's about the same, no. I think. Yeah. But the interiors are good on those Mazdas. I mean, yeah. Mazda 2 for us was amazing because yeah. it's it's a little Mazda 2 and it's got like an executive level interior in it. Nice. It's fantastic. Well, you wouldn't be... Isn't that, is that basically the new Mini? No, not really because I, I think the Mini is a bit more... Um, well, no. it's a lot more expensive for a no, start. No, I mean, but is it like <laughs> the spirit of the Mini? Do you know what I mean? I don't oh, know. I don't know. I just the no. the Mini's it's lost it. No. I, I think the Mini's lost its spirit. I, I would I, agree I, with James. I don't think the Mazda 2 is the spirit of the Mini because I think the Mazda 2 is a spirit of executive. It's a, it's spirit a, it's of executive. It's Mazda a, it's 2. A, yeah. We're talking about the, the Mazda, Mazda 2. The Mazda 2, what it wants to be, it wants to be a 3 Series or an E-Class or C-Class. That's what Mazda it wants to be. Mazda 2. The Mazda 2, yes. Wants to be a 3 Series or an E-Class. When you sit in the car, you'll see Does anyone else agree with Shazad? I think everybody out there listening I to me right now saying Shazad you've hit the nail on the head. Yes, he's putting absolutely. his hands up in defeat. That's people, no, no, people are pulling no. over and they're shouting they're out of the windows they're of their cars at you. They're stopping in the streets getting out and applauding me loud and clear. No, I, I would say <laughs> that I would say cars like the Ford Figo for example. What are you going to say? That wants cars, to be an E-class as no, well? No, no, that's the car <laughs> that is carrying on the torch of things like the Mini. I would what? Say. Where the Indian-made Ford Figo yes, is stick the a manual gearbox in there. It would be hilarious. But That's they do what the make Mini Cooper the manual gearbox. You Not, can actually buy a Figo. You can one here, but if you ask really, really nicely and, and prepare to do without everything else, you can get a manual. And that, I think, with the skinny tires and the manual gearbox and the wheel at each corner... That's what you're talking about you when you talk about original Mini Dynamics. You know what? When 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 the Wrangler has to be taken to the Wrangler graveyard, the that's, Wrangler what I'm, graveyard. that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. The Ford Figo... With a manual transmission. That's the one. That's it. That's got to be it. I think that's the bottom of the heap, isn't it? We get one in. We yeah. put some spotlights on the front. There we go. We get a stripe along the top of it. It'll be wicked, Actually, man. Actually, that's a very good consumer <laughs> top tip, but not from the way you're thinking. <laughs> because the Ford what, Figo. What, <laughs> Second hand, the Figo is probably the best value manual car you can find on Dubizzo. I would really? just. What are they going for on Dubizzo? No, I, you can find them all I, day long. I, I and they're like 15,000 nerves. Really? There you go. They're like nothing See, because nobody want. wants a manual Figo. That's what we I want. We should have Where can a I get one, one make race series oh. yeah. with manual Ford Figo. Yes. Yes. And we don't even need a track. You Is just Ford need, like, listening? Cones in a Let's car do park. it. Let's yeah. get Ford do on this. this. We're in. The three of us racing around the Figos. I'm in it. That's a big episode of Car Talk. Waiting to happen. Yeah. It's a broadcast in the car. We'll do the show from the cars. Epic. <laughs> but where are we going? <laughs> Just in the parking lot. We're going round and round. <laughs> We're going to go so round and round. So one of us is going to vomit. Until the Studio well, City are, security you're, guys you're, chase you're, us down. That's it. <laughs> well, you are because you'll lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'll have to film this. <laughs> yeah. Spectacle. I can't wait. Yeah, we'll stick GoPros everywhere. It'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is going to be great. we got more questions coming. And we still haven't spoken about the cars you guys are um, driving. Yes. Let's uh, do that. You want to get involved <laughs> in the program? This is how you can do it. And if you're wondering what the program is, it's Car Talk. Motoring Middle East is here. Ooh. Motoring Middle East is here. This is Car Talk. If you're wondering what you're listening to, uh, you remember the question we had about the E46 M3? Yes, indeed. And so the one we want. Right. Yes. And so someone's come back and said, uh, and they said the, uh, M, the list, subframe mounts, check those out. Crank bearings, check those out. 
Uh, differential wine, check that out. Vanos and valve clearance. Check all those things. Yes, Fe- all good advice. We did mention the Vanos and yeah. uh, subframe mounts. Good idea, crank bearings, yeah. I and mean, basically, it's what we're saying is that get it over to a specialist. Yes. Because this is a specialist car. This is something that needs a little bit of uh, specialist care. Get it to somebody that knows what they're supposed to be looking for and let them have a look at it once over. Definitely, if it's got a service history, then already it puts you in good stead, but get it checked anyway. Yeah. Okay, Harry's come through and he said, the 2017 BMW 5 Series, when are we going to start seeing some of those 2017 vehicles rolling? You know what? A vague guess? 2017 maybe? No, no, no. These <laughs> things always come out early. <laughs> you know, the tw- 2017s are always out partway through 2016. It should be any time now, don't you think? I don't know. I don't know what the new one looks like, actually, come to think of it. Well, because, I'm, because I'm still struggling to figure out what the new 7 Series looks like. <laughs> and, it, and that's been with us for a few years now, a couple of years, whatever, and it I'm still... I can't, I, can't, I can't figure that one out yet, yeah. so... I don't know. When, when is that coming out, Imtishan? Do we have any idea? You've know? thrown the question to me I as don't if know, I because have I don't a know. laptop open and I, I know what's going Like on. I said, because I can't tell the difference between the 7 Series. So I don't know if the new 5 Series might be out already and may have driven past me and I wouldn't even know. Yeah. That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, BMW we, was good, but we're not talking about cars yet, are we? Are we talking about the cars we've driven yet or we're not? Yeah, yeah, go I ahead. I don't know. <laughs> tell me about the cars you're driving. What have you been driving? <laughs> <laughs> or we'll never get to I'll it. I'll try to segue in there. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm trying to, basically, I'm trying to deflect this completely because I don't know about the 5 Series, but what I do know about is the BMW M2. And it's awesome. Go buy it. That's it. Anything really? else? Uh, okay. <laughs> Car that I picked up first and then you drove. Yeah. GTI Club Sport. Awesomeness. Absolutely. The best GTI Actually, forget the M2. Get the, get the really? Club Sport. Because you can afford the GTI Club Sport. Yeah. 280,000 dirhams, the M2. BMW Not the Club M2. Sport. 280,000 dirhams. Okay, very good car though. Very, very you good car. You say this. I will say this. I will say that. I will say that. I will say one more thing before we move on. Don't bother with the BMW M4 at over 400,000 dirhams. <coughs> I mean, yeah, get the BMW M2 at 280. It still feels like an M3. Was anybody going to buy M4s? What? Tonight? Everybody's hold totally on, confused. On. Yeah, James is like, Don't get the what M4. did he just say? Get, get the, the M2 that drives like an M3. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, okay. You got it, man. <laughs> you know th- you know what? I like the M2, but I'm going to say... <laughs> but if I want the M4, why would I get an M3 that's actually an M2? To yeah, just that. Let's the Emdashan say something sensible. <laughs> yeah, the answer is always buy a Challenger Hellcat. That's what I was <laughs> saying. Got, that's yeah. where I was going. Yeah. For yeah. that money, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Challenger yeah. Hellcat. Why are you buying this V6 and it, and Club M2? Sport. You, you know Club what? Sport I, got, I got I to say this one. Yeah. Driving around in California, I saw a whole bunch of uh, Chrysler 300s. And oh. all I kept saying was, you suckers, because the SRT is only we available in SRT. our market. We get the, the number of Americans that have commented on they our review, furious. they are really unhappy that we're I, getting I, it. I, I, even my kids are going, why would you buy a 300 when you can only get the 300 SRT where we are? Like, it just seems like they're... I mean, not everybody has to have a no, 300 SRT to but go you, to work. Yes, but you, you want do. to have one. Yes, you do. Yeah. yeah but I mean, I like, miss no, it. Again, I, I, Mr. You know, Mr. Alfalasi, would he go for the 300 or the 300 CSRT? You see, that's the sort there of car go. that has to be, <laughs> I, I no, it has to be the SRT. <laughs> yeah. You know I ran one for nearly a couple of months, yes, right? Yes, I know. And I'm still, one. I wanted to run away with it, and I'm still missing it now. It's, it's yeah. that much of an impression it's left on me. So what else are you guys driving? I, I, did I see something about a Nissan? We, we drove talk, a bunch of cars over the summer. Are talking about that Nissan that's uh, currently the on Nissan? your... Nissan? Which Nissan? Oh, the uh, Patrol, yeah, Nismo. Yeah, Nismo. Well, we just haven't finished that putting that one up yet. That like was it? an interesting car. Did you like it? Um, it is an interesting car. Um, <laughs> so... The Audi Q2, I went and drove that in sun, not so sunny Germany. Yes. Or was it Spain? No, <laughs> oh, it was for goodness sake. It was wasn't sunny. It was there you go. There you go. It was first world problems. Journalists, seriously, I can't, I can't remember where I was last year, last week, All last whatever. All these European countries look the same. Anyway, what did you me. think? Uh, this is basically Audi's attempt to make a fun, funky car for teenagers. And I noticed because they said so. Because they had, we're going to have teenagers doing hipster things in our cars, driving around. Teenagers don't want to be hipsters. You know, the funny thing was, when we drove that car into the location, where it was like the base location for the yes. event, there was a whole bunch of like older folks there. <laughs> and their <laughs> eyes lit up when they saw this car. It was the car, there was their dream car, because they were all in bright colors. Yeah. They were really, really, they just loved this car. The young people were like, yeah. yeah. It was basically, it's an Audi A3, but cut down on sort of a slightly lifted so, four-wheel so drive body. So is that trying to be a Mini then? Yeah. Ah, there you go. It's what's very the, much trying to be a Mini. What's the price of that thing? Um, Affordable? 105,000 dirhams off the top of my head. It's not that expensive, but it would be, be more expensive here when so you have options. So hold on, hold on. It's not anywhere near the price of the Ford Figo standard manual transmission. Yeah, but the Ford Figo standard Used. manual transmission is not made in Germany. 
No, but <laughs> one cost a hundred thousand, one's going to cost me fifteen thousand. Yeah, because the labor used. is cheaper in India where the figo is made. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, figo it is. Well, to- talking of <laughs> talking of cheaper. So you, we all cheaper know the Mercedes the A-Class. No, no, not cheaper than <laughs> not cheaper than the Figo, Figo. But you know, we all know <laughs> Figo, Figo. But you know, we all know the Mercedes. Figo. There we go. <laughs> Had to happen. You know the Mercedes A-Class, right? Yes. Right. I've got a secret for you guys. How to get a Mercedes A-Class from 105,000 dirhams? How, how is this in real time? The secret. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this is real time. Yeah. Okay. Right. Brand right. new. Yeah. Yeah. Brand new. Yeah. Don't go to Mercedes. Go to Infinity. What? Yes, go to Infinity. Because I was invited to Beirut. See, unlike whoa, 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 whoa. him, unlike Hold him, on. I do remember where Isn't I went to. Isn't that a different car company? Yes, but listen, bear, bear with me, bear with me. So Gather unlike, around uh, you, children. So, yeah. Gather you, I went to Beirut, which was a beautiful place, by the way. So all my Lebanese fans out there, wonderful, wonderful country. You Love have, it. First you have time. a Lebanese fan base? I don't know. I just thought I might. If I just say, <laughs> if I just keep saying Beirut for enough times, I might have. Th- this anyway, is car talk, by like the way. like Beetlejuice, but anyway, it's moving on. Car talk, Motoring Middle East is here. Shazad Imtishan, we're talking cars. And there. And I'm about to give you the secret on how to get Mercedes A-Class for 105 thousand dirhams by the infinity q30 it starts from 105,000 dirhams it's basically an a-class it's the a-class platform a-class chassis a-class engines even the key fob is from a mercedes but it's been completely done it's had an infinity makeover so it looks like an infinity very good car good fun good fun to drive comfortable spacious all of that stuff it's just w- possibly a, one of the bargains to be had out there now can i buy that here or do i have to go to beirut no no it's in sale here now right okay. now yeah because if you had to buy all our cars from Beirut, that would be, be really hard, troublesome, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 I'll tell you what, I did, want to, I did want to buy a load of cars in Beirut. I wanted to go down there with a trailer because you can buy lots of 80s Japanese cars there. I really, never thought really cool. Beirut would be the place oh, to have them. So many old cool cars there. I wanted to buy them all. I just, I was like, I Is was that like, like Pokemon. Seriously, I was like a kid in, in like a pet shop. I was like, I'll have that one and that one. I just wanted to round them all up. Surely you mean a candy store because a kid in a pet shop, you have to pay for yeah. those pets. <laughs> all right then, whatever. <laughs> I've what got him, viewers. This I is know, a rare chance I when I get, get to get him. I know. I'm just, so what else have we driven? Well, we drove yeah. a bunch of cars, didn't we? Uh, okay, well, let's go to a few more questions and we'll get back to those. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, the 2017 Volvo S90. And what's your take on the 2016? So, uh, so this one's going all hail the 2017 Volvo S90. If you guys love that Volvo? We've had a sit in it. I don't think we're allowed to say that, are we? Ah, uh, we just said it. We just said it. So we've had a sit in it. <laughs> it's yeah. in a secret location. It's in the secret the location. Volvo showroom. Just out, just <laughs> Volvo ne- showroom. Just, yeah. It's in the secret location in the car park just next to the Volvo <laughs> showroom in Dubai Festival City yeah. right now. Okay. Yes, which is top secret. Um, so we've had a look at it and we've had a sit in it. We haven't had a drive of it yet. Okay. But Mohammed's saying like, it's, he loves it. We well, liked, Mohammed from Mazda? We liked, Treason. Wow. He's back. We liked what we saw. We really liked what we saw. It's, we poured over yeah, it. We yeah. poured over this, it. Th- you know what I said? I said, this is how the new BMW 7 Series should have been. Ah. Ah. Good. <laughs> good. Yeah. Okay. And less complicated gizmos and stuff that nobody can understand unless they're 12. It's going down the Tesla route, isn't it, that mm. car? Yeah, well, but Muhammad, it's not there yet. No, no. I mean well, in terms of the, the interior infotainment system. You know what else I saw this summer? Yeah. A 500, uh, Fiat 500 electric car. Oh, E. Wow. Those are apparently really good bargains in the U.S. because the Man. lease rates are insane. It, was, it, was, insane. It, it looks just like the 500, but there's no sound. It was awesome. Apparently, it costs less than filling up for gas every week. It's just an incredible deal. Wow. It's only on lease. Because in Europe, they do have these. For example, they have mm-hmm. a Mini E as well, don't they? Okay, guys. Here's another piece from Mohammed. What's your take on the 2016 Nissan Pathfinder? Currently considering a small SUV at the moment. What do you think? Would you buy a Pathfinder? There's, there's so many good small SUVs right now. See, that's the thing. I mean, uh, It's a good seven-seat, isn't it? I don't know. I Pathfinder, Pathfinder is... <coughs> I always say the Pathfinder stuck, is very comfortable. I'm still stuck in the old Pathfinder mindset. No, I, no. The new Pathfinder is basically an MPV on stilts. Yeah. It's very comfortable, very spacious. The only thing I would say is if you have people, passengers generally longer-legged, the middle row is a little bit problematic because the floor is a bit higher than that. So you sit with your knees up near your ears. So for somebody like me, it's, it's a little bit awkward. But other than that, you have a look at that. Have, the, have a look at the Ford Explorer, which is essentially... Um, uh, a very Explorer similar is car. more expensive than uh, It's more expensive, but I do like the style on the Explorer. Yeah. Also, the Infinity oh. JX. No, no, what is it? Not JX. QX. What? The 60. What yeah. 60. What I'm actually Durango. right on this. Durango. QX 60. Durango. Durango is a good I'm one. I'm going to say Durango good is money. the best money, b- value because that'll be closer to 100k. Yeah. Uh, and you can get them in V6s, V8s, but yeah. not Hellcat. <laughs> but you can, can get imagine. a V6 V8. You can get a V8 Durango. You can't get that in the Japanese competition. Okay. And you can get Uconnect and a whole bunch. I like the way the Durango looks. I'm not sure yeah. it's as popular with some people, but I like the way the Durango looks. I think it's a good looking car. That's Have you seen the back lights on the Durango? They yeah, are so they're so cool. Awesome. It's they're got the epic. racetrack yeah. lighting it's thing. It's amazing. That's the direction I'd be going any day. I'd just follow one around because it looks so good. <laughs> I have actually done that. Um... <laughs> 
another That's one's come through talking about the Ma- <laughs> another another message come back via uh, talking about the Mazda 2 saying that is a, a small city car which comes with a factory fitted heads up display not a whole lot of performance but it does have the feel good factor in spades. This is definitely the bloke from Mazda now. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 definitely. Let other people have a go. <laughs> yeah, he's de- and, and you know and I I and I, I walk right into the mud and I read us messages every time. So yeah. uh, there we go. Ali saying good evening, guys. Uh, we are expecting a baby in a few months, so we congratulations. Are, yeah, Ali, way to go. Or uh, and uh, best to your wife. We're exploring the options of upgrading to a bigger car SUV from our hatchback. Uh, something that can accommodate five adults, two, uh, sorry, uh, five adults, two adults, baby seat in the second row. What would you recommend? Isn't so that the question we just answered? No. The seven-seater? No, no, that was a different question. Yeah, but basically he wants a seven-seater. So, right? so what you need is a Hummer. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's, I think he's. <laughs> or a Honda Odyssey. No, no. How many oh, you, need a H- you, you, need, you need a Hummer. Now, first, first of all, I just want to, I mean... Oh, and he says the budget... Don't fall off the chest. No, the budget's though. about yeah, 100... I'm fall off the stool he, he's got minute. more. He says the budget's about 100 to 120,000. Perfect. So, uh, you know, baby... It needs to be able to accommodate the baby, parents, and uh, the in-laws comfortably. Yeah. I, you I, can I, get... You can, there's loads of used Hummers now in the market. 100,000. I think Durango. the Durango. He's not looking at a Beetle, that's for no, sure. I think I'm the 120, Durango. really... No, Durango, 120 could be tough. I mean, go down there, see if you can strike a deal, possibly. I'll, I'll go back to Old the Odyssey. Stock. Odyssey, in, in serious. Odyssey is more expensive at 150. But uh, no, no. And, no, they're about 120. They're about 120. No, no, they're 140. But you're gonna hit this. When do they put the price up on those? You're gonna hit That's this. A bad idea. Oh, the only Odyssey Pajero. you can afford is the Odyssey J. No, no, no. Don't look at that. <laughs> the pa- Odyssey J. That's Pajero. what he when just recommended. When you go into the Honda showroom and you say, "Can I have a look at the Odyssey?" and they say, "Point you towards the J." Say, "Not, not that one. Not the fake one. Show me the real one." Yeah. What, about, what about a Pajero? 90,000 dirhams, 95,000 dirhams, yeah. I think. And a free fridge. The thing yeah. is, a seven-seater, the seats at the back aren't the biggest. So they're not yeah. free. They're more like kids' seats. So like, yeah, I suppose you get it. Pathfinder, maybe? The Pathfinder's more expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe. X-Trail. <sighs> X-Trail. Ooh. But it, it needs you know, to be know, a legit seven-seater. You know, I've just updated our, our new car buying guide on motoringme.com. Go and check it out because what I've done in this guide is I've broken down categories of cars such as SUVs, which is obviously what he's after, by budget. So if you go to MoteringME.com, go check it out. It's a downloadable? No, it's all on the page, man. Okay. I can't download <laughs> it as a PDF to print it off. And you could How if you big wanted is your to. printer? <laughs> but then you're, just, you're, you're killing the forest. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Why would you do that? We got a we got another message that's come through. In fact, we uh, we got a whole bunch more messages to get through, and we we still have more cars that you guys have been driving to talk oh, about. Yes. This is Car Talk. If you're wondering what you're listening to, and by all means, get involved in the show. Motoring Middle East is here. This is Car Talk. Ali's come back, and he's saying, "Hey guys, get with the program." I'm looking. I thought for, we were on the program. No, he's saying, "I'm looking for a five seater, not a seven seater." Uh, I meant something that can accommodate two adults and the baby seat in the back row. Five seater. Well, that changes everything. Volvo. Volvo XC90 is brilliant, but I won't come in his budget, though, that's for sure. I'll tell you what will come in his budget, and this is, it goes back to us trying to recap one of the cars that we've driven over the summer. And this was in Berlin. See, I do remember where I've been. Okay. I drove the Volkswagen Tiguan. And oh, I forgot all about the Tiguans. Yeah, and that's 95,000 dirhams, uh, although possibly less, because they haven't fixed the pricing yet. And, I heard and that's that a five-seater. That's a nice five-seater. That five is seater. a full five-seater, very comfortable, very spacious, big boot, very easy to drive. It's got all oh, the latest man. kit on it, all the latest safety kit. It, and, they, and they made your own safety in this car. They made your own safety, so if you're worried about your family and stuff, it's a really good car you know, to look at. A that's, safe car. Yeah. It's comfortable car. It is something that performs well, and it looks good. Ali. Brand new in the showrooms now. Go check it out. Go check it out. Volkswagen. This that, that's a great option. Yeah. I forgot all about the Tiguans. No, that's when a good you, one. And I think when you start looking at the other five seaters out there, there are lots of other options. You can go, you can get, you know, pretty inexpensive. I think the sheer quality that you're yeah. going to get from that Volkswagen puts it at the it's top solid. of my it's list. It's beautifully built, beautifully yeah. built. Yeah. But like you say, I mean, there's lots of stuff out there. I mean, little five seater SUVs. I mean, remember we did the Renegade and yeah. the Fiat 500X. That little Suzuki we thought was tremendous value for money. I mean, what was yeah. that, like 70k for yeah. a five seat SUV? No, it's great value. Yeah. But I just think the build quality and just the quality of what you're getting. Oh, the Volkswagen quality is, yeah, you, yeah. You, you'll, you'll feel it the moment you get in it. It's, it's fantastic. Now, here's the only other question. If I'm going, say, for the Suzuki, which I also really like, yeah. is the servicing going to be a lot higher with a Volkswagen or, you know, what I what Well, I you do? know, these days you buy these cars with packages. That's right. And that's, all, yeah. that's why I always recommend to people. Because people always sit there go worry, oh, but well, what's it going to cost to maintain? What's it? You know, you're only going to worry about that after yeah. your three-year period, after your warranty period, after your service package period. If you're buying a new car... You're going to get the warranty anyway. Get the service package as well. For peace of mind, just get yeah. the service package. Then you know what your cost is. 
Then there you know you what your cost is, at least for the duration of that package. we got no names. So there you go, Ali. That, that, I hope that helps you. Go check out the Volkswagen. We've got another message come through. No name, but it's someone who's driving their Jaguar XF home at the moment. They said nice. they give this car a 10 out of 10. I hope he doesn't work for Jaguar. So maybe. He says, what do you Hi, guys Salman. think? <laughs> he says, what do you guys think? <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> XF? I like the XE. Oh. I like the XE. XF Can you explain what that is for the people. Okay, no so the XF is the new car. The XF, there's just they've just done a brand new one. I don't know if the gentleman in question, Salman, is driving a new <laughs> one or the old one. I don't know. Uh, but there is there is a new XF. There is a completely new XE, which is the younger brother to the XF. There's a completely new platform, new chassis, light aluminium, and it's sort of a spiritual successor to the old X-Type, if you remember that car. Uh-huh. But whereas that car wasn't very good, let's be honest, this car is so much better to drive. It's so well resolved. It's still four-wheel drive, but it's so got well resolved. What does that mean? A car it just is so means well that it's resolved. a good saloon that works as an everyday commuter car for you and your family, but you can take this out, you can do long distances in it, you can go up to okay. the mountains, you can throw it around, you can have a really good time in this car. The lightweight really makes it fun to check around. I really like the XE. I thought it was fantastic. Okay. New XF, respect, but XE I thought was a real revelation. Hmm, very nice. What else have you guys been driving? Mm. Silence in the Absolute room. Absolute silence. Uh, he I can't d- remember, can he? Well, there's one. He can't co- remember where he's been. No, he can't remember <laughs> what he's driven. <laughs> listen, you. Listen, you. The problem is, I've driven a car and my lips are sealed because I can't what? talk about it. Oh, That's come right, yeah. on. I'm actually under a legal gag order for wow. talking about it. It's wow. called embargo. It's a fancy way of saying it's embargo. Wow. Signed in blood. But I'm going to be driving it very soon and then I'll be able to talk about it after September the 10th. Okay. So. It is a new family vehicle. It's a seven seater. It's a luxury vehicle and it's all new. Hmm. It's got a V6 engine. Can people guess what it is? But you've been all over the houses, though, haven't you? You've been. Uh, Maybe not houses. Excuse me, I'm a Batman. I don't know. <laughs> 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 we can't. We can't let people. We can't even ask people to guess what that car is because that no. would get us into trouble. No, no, what else? Because you, you went. Where else did you go? You went um, before the last trip. You did another trip somewhere. You can't remember where he's been. He goes I on all these fancy international trips. And you can't be. I've I'll tell you what. Whilst he's trying to remember, I'll just quickly mention the Cadillac XT5, which again I drove in Berlin, and. Uh, Again, it's a five-seater uh, affordable luxury SUV. Well, not affordable. It's, it's a little bit expensive, but that's because it is a Cadillac. But mm-hmm. if you look at it compared to its contemporaries uh, in that uh-huh. sector, it's it's cheaper. So in that sense, I would say it's affordable. We're talking of a car that comes in at, I'm just scrolling down furiously, uh, 166,000 dirhams. Uh, for Look that his you get, fingers go. I know you get a three. <laughs> you can see them. Yeah, uh, three point. Uh, hey, they're not. I don't have little hands. I don't have. Oh, sorry, that's somebody else's line, isn't it? <laughs> so 3.6 V6, 310 horsepower. This thing will do 0 to 107.5 seconds. I got wheel spin out of this thing. It's, it is really good fun to drive. But it's a really comfy, really well-equipped new Cadillac and definitely worth checking out. Hmm. I tell you what else I drove. Uh, and people following us on our Facebook pro on facebook.com slash motoring Middle East will know that I had, up to the entire top to ETH, a Range Rover, Long wheelbase Vogue. I saw that. For the first time yeah. I've ever driven a Range Rover. And what did you think of that? Because uh, you, you've often had words about Range Rovers. Well, I've said to you many times, I think Range Rovers are rubbish. Why That's does anybody buy okay. these cars? Those, that was the exact words. I was just going to I have say. no reason to That's like That's his it. opinion, not mine. Yeah, yeah but, but, they, but the <laughs> new one, I haven't driven it. And I think, well, you know what? I like the Sport more. And the new Sport, I don't like so much, but he likes the Sport more. Yeah, we've had a reversal. Yeah. yeah. Really? It's like yeah. Freaky Friday, but yeah. the right way. So... <laughs> The long story short is I had this Range Rover. I think Range Rover forgot about it. Because <laughs> they gave it to me for three days. And then after three days, I was like, do you want it back? And they, they didn't answer the email for another few days. And they said, it's not the, I'll tell you what, it's not that they forgot about it. They've got nowhere to keep it. It's so it, damn big. It is <laughs> massive. Yeah. And the long wheelbase part is a bit silly. I mean, it is so big that even Shazad can recline in the back. Wow. It is yeah. absolutely expensive. Yeah. But, but it was a lovely, lovely car. Really? It was actually absolutely converted me to the Range Rover thing because, you know, it's a sort of car where you are a bit of a snob. Yeah. But at the same time, you can really appreciate the isolation. Mm. Now, a lot of luxury car companies, uh, some of the Japanese, for example, some of the Germans as well think luxury is all about throwing toys at you. You need to have, you know, little gesture controls. You need to have eye tracking, all of this stuff. But Range Rover is like, it's a car that's serene. It's predictable. It's got plenty of pork. And that's like 500 horsepower for the supercharged V8. Mm-hmm. And above all, it is just imperial. You mm. sit in your command driving position, staring down at everybody. You know what? You don't sit in the left lane. You just sit there and you're one lane less. And you think, let the people go past. 
like the queen. You just usher Love them it. past. Love it. Hey, I got to hold that thought for a second. Ali's come back to us. Remember, he was talking about the five-seater. He says, the Tiguan is what I have my eyes on. Good choice. But is the new model of their uh, elongated MQB platform... Is that the one that you that's guys are one. referring to? Yeah, yeah, that's oh, the one. and he goes, oh. That's a bit nerdy. Yeah, well, it's very nerdy. hold it, it gets nerdy. better. He goes, oh, it's gorgeous. I drive a GTI that yeah. has 270,000 K on it, and I'm convinced that the VW quality is no brainer. No brainer. Thanks then a bunch. Go down, buy it, and when you buy it, please tell them Car Talk and Motoring Middle East sent you their way. And you know what? He also <laughs> comes back. Ali comes back says, uh-huh. his, and he's, he says, Shazad, yeah. I am just going through the car buying guide on MotoringMiddleEast.com, and it is a wealth of information. Oh. Really great read. Thank you once again. Oh, wow. Cheers, Ali. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks for checking it out. So, thanks so much for, for following up on what we've asked you to do. That's brilliant. <laughs> so, That's see, amazing. People Live radio interaction. And respond. Great uh, stuff. Here's uh, Maras has come through and says, uh, Seat are not getting new cars. Have you guys seen anything? I'm done, not, not too uh, up on speed on the Seat brand at the moment. He dro- they Blank go- faces all around. Yeah. Um, he, he goes on to say, I drove, I test drove an Astra OPC. That's Opel. That's yeah. not Seat. Well, but okay. that's Opel, yeah. So, that's so he's a bit, a bit Seat, mental. It's Seat's a mental not getting that. new cars. And then he says, but I, he went, and then it's, now he's gone to another. And yeah. he says, I uh, didn't like it. Okay. Astro, word, you know what? Is that, he said horrible, Astro, actually. The Astro OPC? Yeah, you're not thinking of the I Corsa. I love that car. You see, he liked the Astro. I, I liked the Corsa because the Corsa was very cool. Corsa so was on. horrible. So then Maras goes on to say, <laughs> yeah. again goes on to say, I tried the Focus ST. I fell in love and bought it. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, 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 if, if, he's a, if he's a regular listener, he will know how mu- how often the Focus ST comes up in conversation. I absolutely love the Focus ST. I think it's one of the best value hot hatches out there. That's one word well I done. have for the Focus ST: juvenile. Yeah, because he doesn't know what he's talking juvenile. about. Juvenile. He doesn't know what it's he's talking about. It's a teenager's dream. Well uh-huh. done, Miraz. Good car. Yeah, there we go. Guys, That's we've, we've run out the clock on the show. Oh, no! Next week, same place, same time, 9 to 10. You can tune in and listen to the guys from Motoring Middle East to uh, talk about everything that's worth talking about. And maybe some cars. And maybe some cars maybe as well. Maybe some cars. Guys, thanks a lot for coming in. Talk <laughs> thanks, to you next man. week. See ya. <laughs> Bye. There we go. That's a, that's a wrap on Car Talk. And, and I, I just noticed here.